You're listening to Japanese Baptist Church in Seattle, Washington. Hi, and welcome to another installment of JBC Connect. And for this, I wanted to turn our attention to something that has been stirring in me personally.、Um, I wanted to talk about race assumptions and prejudices. I think this has been really on my mind lately because of、uh, a lot of the dialogue that's been going on. About prejudices to certain minorities. And being an Asian American myself, it's been very troubling to hear about these narratives that have been going out,、uh, trying to identify the coronavirus with a certain ethnic or origin. Now, maybe that has some kind of political agenda behind it, and you know, I don't want to get into that right now. But I do want to talk more about the dangerous consequences of doing something like that. I've heard about.、Um, Instances and events where Asian Americans like myself are being attacked or discriminated simply because of how we look and deemed as a source of the coronavirus, or that perhaps we are spreading it in our communities, or that we are the reason for why we are all going through this difficult time of quarantine. And we have to be very careful when we make certain statements because certain statements come certain. Consequences. And those co- consequences can often happen、um, in the form of presumptions that are formed, unchecked presumptions. And this is kind of a, you know, a crude definition, but for me, a lot of what racism means is that it is the unchecked behavior of dehumanizing someone else that is not like you. And what happens is that we begin to make certain assumptions. And if those assumptions lead to somehow dehumanizing that person, we begin to justify ourselves in treating them in a certain way. And often when we dehumanize people,、um, we begin to feel like we have power over them because we're human and they're not. And then we also treat them in a certain way with that power. And it can often come in, come in the force of prejudices or even violence. I think this is something that we have to really just call out. It's important to say that we can't let ourselves be dehumanized. We can't allow for certain narratives that treat us in a certain way to happen. And for me, I think this is very important because this was a passion of Jesus Christ as well. Back in Jesus' time, many people would dehumanize and speak lower of the Samaritans.、Um, and it all started from perhaps like difference in philosophy of、uh, origin and、um, approach of how they did religious worship. Sounds kind of familiar to like times right now. But Jesus was very intentional and careful to reach out to Samaritans、uh, despite the popular culture around him that told him not to do such things. That's why it's so profound to see that when everyone else in his day and age in his cultural context was walking around、uh, Samaria, he would walk straight into Samaria. When no one was talking to Samaritan women, he would talk directly to a Samaritan woman. Friends, we have this kind of culture that would, you know, if we just let things happen just naturally, quote unquote, we wouldn't talk to certain people. We would stay in our assumptions. But we need something that is Holy, Spirit, Holy Spirit inspired, like Jesus. To go right into our assumptions and challenge them and break them. One thing、uh, in this time that has really been heavy on my heart is to hear about Ahmad Arbery, this 25 year old man who was shot, and only two months later were his、um, shooters brought to justice to be arrested. Now, that case is still unfolding and still very complicated, but it has brought to light the fact. That Georgia is amongst a number of states that don't have adequate laws against hate crimes. And I think certain systems are being exposed right now during this investigation. However, the investigation shakes out, and whether,、uh, whatever is determined, what is clear is that certain places are not safe for minorities. If certain things happen to somebody, We don't have protections for them. Friends, this is a time for us as a church to take seriously 
how Jesus called us all to love our neighbor as ourselves. And there were no qualifications of their background. There were no qualifications of how they conducted themselves. To love our neighbor as ourselves is a very strong and powerful statement. And if we are serious about it, then we need to also take seriously that Jesus considered those who are blessed the people who are peacemakers. Now more than ever, the church needs to really rise up to the calling to pray for justice, to move in justice, to be people of peace, who create peace, who recognize and treasure the story of those who are being forgotten, for those who are on the margins. Let's pray together. Let's stand together. And the reason why I implore you to do this is because this is so much a part of the legacy that we have here at our church. I'm standing right now in front of a picture of one of our former pastors, Reverend Emery Andrews. And he pastored at a very important time in the history of our church. He pastored when there were many prejudices toward Japanese Americans. It got so severe, in fact, that a presidential order, executive order came that ordered all Japanese Americans to be incarcerated into camps without any understanding of where they would go or for how long they'd be gone. But Reverend Emery Andrews is pastoring Japanese Baptist Church at this time. And he stood with the Japanese American community. He agreed to watch over their belongings as they kept some of them here in our church. He went out to pastor and minister to people and he associated with them. Even though many in his community really attacked him for doing so, he still stood by the Japanese American community because he knew this was how to live in the way of Jesus Christ. Friends, right now there are a number of cases where people need your support, need your voice, need your advocacy. And in doing so, when you stand with them, when you love them, when you give them the dignity that God has given them, because they are made in the image of God, then you stand in the way of Jesus Christ. You stand living in the way of Jesus Christ. Let us all walk together with Jesus in this very important time. Peacemakers are needed now more than ever. Go in peace and be people of peace. Amen.